Hi everybody, Gary Williams here for Toolbarn.com's Barn Banter. Hey, you know, we're made in America. This program is entirely produced in America, believe it or not, despite all the special effects you may see and all the elaborate sets. Look, everybody likes tools made in America, and it's a fact, some are not. But at Toolburn.com, we try to show you as many good products made here in this country as we possibly can because we think that's important and we think it's important to you. So, we're going to show you some of those things today. We're going to go to a tool expo in Omaha, Nebraska. Now, we're going to talk to some brand reps for companies who make their tools right here in the United States. Then we'll come back to the studio and talk to Casey from DeWalt, who will talk about their Built in America program and all the tools they manufacture and what that means for DeWalt what that means for the, the, the country and what that means for DeWalt's customers. So stay with us. We're going to show you some things that we think you're going to enjoy. Now, I know you've got some things that are made in America and some things that uh, maybe are not, but what do you have that is made in America right now? Linux products, Linux tools, a uh, company that's been around since 1915. We're celebrating our centennial year. They're made out of East Longmeadow on a campus that's over 11 acres. Um, started out with eight customers or eight employees. Now is a company that's over 500 customers big. Um, 500 it's employees. In 500, employees. yes, employees. Right. 500 employees. Um, Linux has done a, a great job at focusing on on certain SKUs, never getting too big, but making sure they bring quality to every single product they have. You're going to know Linux for their whole saw blades, their reciprocating saws. They started off though as a hack saw company. Um, so they're a really interesting made in America company. What kind of things do you look forward to this year? You think it's going to be a good year? Um, uh, obviously, I would think some of you, what you do depends on what's going on in the economy. Absolutely. Well, you know, the, the economy's up. Places like Omaha, Kansas City, and the different places I sell, you can see construction everywhere. Um, I think that that's always good for business, right? I mean, we're moving product like we've, we've never moved product before. So. Um, yeah, we're going to have success this year. I mean, and as, as we get more job opportunities out there and people are going back to work and there's more money to be spent, there's more buildings to be made. Tell me a little bit about these tool belts. You know, what's special about them? Uh, where are they made? Those kind of things. Well, the thing that's special about these, um, top to bottom, this belt is made 100% in the United States of America. Uh, the rivets come from a USA company. The cotton comes from a USA company. It's tanned in the United States of America. Um, and that's what make this, makes this belt kind of special. So, um, so it's origin, but uh, also the design. I know you guys put a lot of the they put a lot of effort into the design for ergonomics and those kind of things. Well, Daryl Turner, the owner of Occidental Leather, um, he was a carpenter by trade, and he started making these tool belts um, in his garage. Um, and he knew that something needed to happen with the tool belts to make them more ergonomically designed. Um, there's a specific place for specific tools to promote working rhythm on the job site. What's uh, next coming down the road in tool belts? Is there anything innovation-wise that might be uh, coming down the path? Yeah, I mean, we keep adding on. Um, we have this little tool shield in here um, for your, um, you know, your sharp objects, your straight edges, your chisels, uh, so on and so forth. That's something new we've been putting in all of our tool belts. Um, and we keep, you know, coming up with new designs. But, you know, right now our designs are pretty proven. Um, and, you know, the guys like what we have right now. A lot of people look at it, look at uh, tools and they say, well, a tool's a tool. A soccer wrench is a soccer wrench. Yes, is that, I hear that a lot. <laughs> obviously, that's not the approach you guys take. Correct. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that we're rep uh, represented by a good brand. And Apex owns a lot of great brands, um, Armstrong and Allen being one of them. They're very well known because of how long they last. I mean, a lot of people come up and say, hey, my grandpa gave me this. You know, I've had it for many years. Armstrong's, um, Armstrong's actually in their 125th year this year. So it's uh, it's well stood a long time. Talk about innovations. What kind of things? What kind of uh, you know? What innovations occur in tools? I know that <laughs> they do, but uh, but what makes one tool different than another? Uh, some of it's by the material that's made, and the others is you know, like I said, one of the new things that we've come out with is the aviation line. So that's something that we offer that a lot of other people don't. Um, but the, most of it's just how the tool's made, and the time and effort, and the research and development that we put into it. So there's more specialization in the development of the tools uh, yes, for specific exactly. purposes? Yep, yeah, exactly. Wrench is not just a wrench. Yes, exactly, yeah. Okay. And we also have, uh, you know, warranty, lifetime warranty on all of our tools. So that's something that we offer that some of the brands don't as well. Scott, tell me a little bit. We talked a little bit about the boys. Tell me what makes these unique and why they're, uh, why they're good in the market today. Well, MK Morris is, uh, is a 50-year-old family-owned business. They've been very good at recapitalizing in their company, which gives us new technology pretty much every year. 
So everything that we've displayed here today uh, is new within the last six months to the marketplace. So we're trying to be an industry leader as far as uh, domestically made technology. But what makes these special in the market? Well, what we've tried to do is, is as we talk about new technology, we have what we call a triple triple chip tooth technology on our circular saw blades. So what we've always tried to do is make sure that the carbide that's, that's uh, part of the tool uh, is always the newest and best in the market. That way we're getting a better, faster cut uh, and better durability in the tool for your dollar. We are the only uh, manufacturer making this particular product in the United States. Everything else that we compete against in the marketplace uh, is coming from the Far East. So it's uh, China, Taiwan, and Japan. Is there a, a better quality issue, do you think, of having things that kind of control by having it made here? Um, I mean, I, I certainly feel that way. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to talk down about our competition. We do have good competition. Uh, but I think it's um, uh, because we're domestically made, we're, we're a little bit more economically based because of that. Uh, we're certainly not giving the product away, but uh, we can compete very well against our low cost producers out of China. We're here with Casey Smith from DeWalt, and as we told you, Casey is going to talk about DeWalt's Built in America program, and it's an interesting program, and Casey's got all the details. So give us the, uh, the high-level view, and then we'll talk a little about specifics. What is the, what's the program involved? So the high-level view really is, is taking a look at who we are as a company and, and what's our brand DNA. And DeWalt was founded here in the U.S. Uh, we pride ourselves on making uh, some of the industry-leading performance and durability-wise power tools and accessories in the market, and those are used by people that build our country, right. right? So we are looking at how can we continue to invest in our tool manufacturing and bring it back to U.S. soil at the same time. How are you doing with that? Uh, I mm -hmm. think we're doing quite well. Uh, this year we'll launch another new manufacturing facility in Indiana that will bring seven manufacturing facilities on U.S. soil producing DeWalt power tools which will lead to over 14 million products produced each year here in the USA. So, so what does that uh, kind of an effort mean to DeWalt and what does it mean to uh, the country and, and to the workers and, and to the consumers? Well, there's several key points with that. I think the biggest one is it's a sense of pride. Uh, like I mentioned before, we were founded here. Our headquarters is still in this country. And so most folks in the US, when given a choice between a couple different products of equal or similar quality, nine times out of ten they're going to lead towards the one that's built in the USA just knowing that it was maybe made in their backyard. How big a deal does price get to be in, a, in that kind of a decision making process? Price is probably fairly even across the board so it comes to made in America and quality? Made in America and quality are our two number one priorities of ours for sure right. and the other thing that looks that works well for us is efficiency too. Yeah. So when you talk about price we can manufacture a product in the morning we can have it in the distribution center after lunch and then yeah. that evening, it's on its way out the door to the customer. And how many things can you say that about in this world that, that, that you know, produced, delivered within a, a matter of days uh, virtually? So. Right. So what has it done for, um, well, you, for example? How do you feel about the program? What's it done for your... You know, I've been work? with this company for over 10 years, and when we started this initiative a few years ago, yeah. um, it was something that still gives me goosebumps to talk about. It's one of the proudest moments I've had working for this company. And you're talking about products that are well made with global materials, I assume. I mean, you can't yep. do everything here, correct? That's correct. Um, so we are a global company right. and we do use materials from across the world. Um, at the end of the day, we are still going to continue to make sure that our tools are, are leading the industry in performance and durability. Right. And we're going to search the globe to get the best materials possible. Yeah. Here's a great example. In cordless tools, which are growing at an exponential rate, right. the battery is, is the heart of that. The tool doesn't function without the battery. Mm -hmm. And we're going to search the world to make sure we're putting the best fuel cells possible, uh, regardless of where it comes from. Sure. Another example would be when you look at things like reset blades mm -hmm. or circular saw blades. Right. These, we say, built in the USA with global materials because wherever possible, we're actually using recycled steel. And that steel might come from here in the U.S., but mm -hmm. it might come from overseas as well. So we're just really talking about full disclosure. All right. And fabrication of these things would occur here, but with materials that maybe a, the recycled materials that come from elsewhere. Right. The idea is to provide a Made in America experience uh, with uh, a value proposition with quality materials. Correct. Great. Casey, thanks for being with us. And I'll tell you what, there are a lot of great brands to choose from on Toolbarn.com, and we have a special page, a Made in America page, on Toolbarn.com's website. So check that out. Uh, thanks for being with us today. You can tell everybody you saw all this on uh, Barn Banner. Hey, thanks for being here. 
If you want to know more about Made in America, we did a couple more interviews uh, on the subject, and we've got those on our YouTube channel. You'll find them really interesting. So thanks for being here.